Hello friends, welcome to my series on questions from different aspect of machine learning. In today's video, I am going to discuss a question which is related to the concept of IID or independent and identically distributed. This is an important concept in ML and its solid understanding is necessary to appreciate the different statistical properties and assumptions of a learning algorithms. Let us move to the question. We first define the setting of the problem. Suppose I have a fair coin such that probability of obtaining heads is 0.5. Now I perform multiple tosses of the coin and observe whether ith toss resulted in a head or a tail. With the ith toss, I associate a random variable x sub i such that it is 1 when we observe a heads and 0 when we observe a tail. Under the setting described, let us ask three questions. Question number one, is the sequence of x sub i iid? Question two, if the underlying coin is not fair, is the resulting sequence of x i iid? Note that this question it differs from the question number one because in question number one we made an assumption of the coin being fair. Question three Assume that we define another random variable a sub i, which is sum of xj for j equals to one to i or number of heads in the i tosses of coin is the sequence of a sub i iid. To answer the question we need to understand a little background. Let us try to understand what it means by IID. IID is an acronym for independent and identically distributed. Let us try to develop an intuitive understanding of what it means by independence and identically distributed. The concept of independence arises when we are talking of more than one event. Intuitively, for two events A and B, if the probability of B remains unchanged irrespective of whether A has happened or not, then the two events are said to be independent. Consider a fair coin such that the probability of heads is 0.5. We perform four coin tosses resulting in a sequence head tail, tail and another tail. It must be obvious that despite of observing tails in the second and third tosses, the probability of head is still 0.5 in the fourth toss. So observing a whole sequence of tails does not imply that the probability of heads will increase in the subsequent toss. Let us look at another sequence of four tosses resulting in four heads. Even after four heads, the probability of obtaining a head in the fifth toss is still 0.5. This clearly means that the probability of observing a heads on the fifth trial stays constant irrespective of what we observe on the first four tosses of the coin. Let us consider a third sequence where we are seeing an alternative heads and tails. So what it implies is that the probability of observing heads in the subsequent trials continues to stay the same. Now let us move to the concept of identically distributed. Intuitively it means that when we are performing multiple tosses the probability distribution on every toss stays the same. To better understand the concept and to distinguish it from independence, consider a fair coin. Let us perform four tosses with the same coin and assume that we obtain a sequence of heads followed by three tails as shown in the video. It must be clear that every toss is independent of the previous toss as we discussed before and that the probability of obtaining heads or probability distribution is same across the multiple tosses. Consider 
another example with the same coin. This time we obtain alternating sequence of heads and tails. <coughs> what is important to observe is that probability distribution stays constant for every toss. To better appreciate the concept, let us consider another setup. Here we have a fair coin like we discussed before and we performed four tosses with the coin. We obtain a sequence of heads followed by three tails. To contrast it, let's have another setup where we use different coins, each having different probability of heads associated with it and toss them to obtain a sequence of head and three tails. Note that although we obtain the same sequence, the probability distribution changes for each toss. The first toss was done with a coin that will always show heads and the fourth one with a coin that will always show tails. So in the first setup, tosses are identically distributed. In the second setup, they are not. With this understanding, we are equipped to address our question. So let us move back to our questions. The first question that we were asked was, is the sequence of x sub i iid? Let us consider an outcome sequence associated with four tosses of a fair coin. Here, x1 is 1 as we obtain an heads and x2 is 0 because we obtain a tails. Similarly, x sub 3 and x sub 4 are both zeros because we obtain a tail. Clearly, we have seen how a sequence of fair coin tosses are independent because the probability of heads on an ith toss is not affected by what we observe in the previous tosses. Since the value of xi is completely determined by what we observe on the ith toss and as the ith toss is independent of what happened in the previous toss, hence x sub i is independent and of random variables x sub 1 to x sub i minus 1. We also observe that the probability distribution was the same for every toss and hence x sub i are identically distributed. Now let's move on to the next question. If the underlying coin is not fair, is the sequence of x sub i iid? Clearly, the only implication of the fact that coin is not fair is that probability distribution is different. The coin tosses are still independent and due to same probability distribution, they are identically distributed. Moving to the third question. Assume that we define another random variable a sub i, which is sum of all xj's from j equals to 1 to i is the sequence of a i i i d. The first step is to study the sample space for a i. Since a sub i is equivalent to counting the number of heads in the tri i trials, the sample space corresponding to a sub i is a set of non-negative numbers between 0 and i. To better understand this, let us consider the probability distribution of a sub 2. We have a probability of 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 for observing 0, 1 and 2 heads respectively in two tosses of a coin. This is because there are four different possible outcomes. One among them has a zero heads or two tails. Two of the outcomes have one heads each and one outcome has two heads. Thus, we can understand the probability distribution for A sub 2. Let us consider the case of A sub 3 or three coin tosses. This has different sample space and the probability of obtaining 0, 1, 2 and 3 heads is 0 0.125, 0 0.375, 0 0.375 and 0 0.125 respectively. This is because we have 8 possible outcomes as shown. We can rearrange the possible outcomes to realize that one outcome 
had no heads three outcomes had one head three outcomes have two heads and one outcome have one heads three heads sorry and hence the probability distribution so what we observe that the sample spaces for a sub 2 and a sub 3 and a sub 4 are different and hence the probability distributions are also different thus it is pretty clear that the sequence of a sub i cannot be identically distributed now let us address the question of independence to understand it we consider the case of a sub 2 as we discussed before the probability distribution of a sub 2 has a probability of 0 0.25 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 of observing 0 1 and 2 heads respectively in two tosses suppose that we toss the coin once and observe a head now the conditional probability distribution of a2 changes because there is no way a2 can have zero heads as we have already observed a head on first toss so the valid values of a2 can have is one or two and they are equally likely conditioned on the fact that first toss results in a head consider the other outcome where the first toss results in a tails now a2 cannot have a value of 2 as we already have observed 1 tails in the free first toss and hence the valid values are 0 and 1 both being equally likely thus we realize that prior probability distribution of a2 changes based on what we observe in the first toss of the coin clearly a2 is dependent on the value of x sub 1 and hence the value of a sub 1 clearly sequence of a sub i, I are neither independent nor identically distributed to summarize sequence of xi is iid when the coin is fair as well as when the coins are not fair the sequence of a sub i where a sub i is a sum of x sub 1 to x sub i is not iid thank you so much for viewing the video I hope the video explained you the concept of IID. If you wish to be updated with my other videos, please subscribe to this channel.